and welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie for, talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Natasha Martinez, and this is a daily show where we give you all the latest news in the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us today, the host of Collider Jedi Cancel, Christian Harloff. Well, it's so nice to see you. Thank you for joining us today on Collider Movie Talk. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That was not supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but we went with it. Uh, so I wanted to tell you guys a couple things here. First, the meet and greet, Comic-Con, coming up next Thursday. That's right. We will be at Comic-Con. Come and meet and greet at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's the Collider. It's Schmoes. It's Comic-Con HQ. It's the whole crew. We're going to be there. Make sure that you come and say hello. 6 to 9 right outside the Fox Sports Grill. The other thing is we all know Rogue One, the trailer. It's dropping tomorrow. So what we're going to do, we're waiting because Perry is on the ground and we're going to figure out what's happening in the world of Star Wars. So we may have about a 10 minute delay on movie talk because we obviously want to cover that tomorrow on movie talk so depending on when the trailer drops just be aware that movie talk might be like another 10 or 15 minutes or depending on if it drops early normal time but that's it natasha who else we got today all right we've got the host of collider heroes joining us john schnapp all right where's my music hit it baby <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was Christian Harloff, you know. It's harder to dance to his voice, but I can like like maybe mix do it. Intro uh -huh. here. Harloff in the it's house, baby. Dropping. We're gonna go to party late. Harloff in the hey. So anyway, I'll see you guys at Comic Con. All right. Also, the host of DC All Access, Jason Inman. I'm so happy to be here on this Lucy Goosey show. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a good thing that I that I'm still off the high of seeing Star Trek Beyond last night because the only way that I, I feel like I can keep up with you guys. Without any spoilers, yeah. was it awesome? Yes. You. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm guessing we're getting into it. Okay. Please. According to a report from The Hollywood Reporter, Ghostbusters has reportedly been banned in China by censors for a number of obscure reasons. Due to their official censorship guidelines, the China Film Bureau can turn down films that, in their eyes, promote cults or superstition. The country's regulators have been known to use this provision as rationale for turning down films that feature ghosts or supernatural beings in a semi-realistic way, as proven last year when they banned Guillermo del Toro's Crimson Peak with Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, also suffering the same fate in 2006, thanks to its depictions of ghouls and cannibalism. But as THR reports, there's a truer, non-superstitious reason for it all. Based on their own sources, the trade states that regulators simply don't believe Chinese audiences will take to the new movie. However, in a report from Deadline, Sony commented that the film hasn't even been submitted to the Chinese Film Bureau. With international sales a constant concern for Hollywood studios, especially in China, the difference really does matter here. It's too soon to tell whether this loss will be a major blow for Ghostbusters, a film with a reported production budget of $144 million. Christian, what do you think of the reasons for, or what do you think the reasons are for China banning Ghostbusters? Oh, let's start on whether or not it's going to be a big loss. Of course it's going to be a big loss. China and China, they, they add a lot of money to the international box office, mm -hmm. man. So this, is, this will absolutely be a big loss if, this, if it sticks. As far as the reasoning goes, let's go on both sides here. If they've done this before. This is what the government, this is what they believe in, and it, it, they've, they've done this before to other films. So it's not like they're just signaling this movie out. However, if the rumors that they are signaling out because they don't think people will like it, that's just dopey. If that's gonna, if that's the reason, I ha don't happen to think that that's the reason why. I think that it's they have these beliefs, they're sticking to these beliefs, they've done it before, and now they're doing it again. If that's if that's the case, so I'm gonna say that if that's the reason, I don't necessarily agree with it, but they've done it before, and that's what they believe. So so be it. But if it is because they don't think people will like it, th then you're just taking money away from your from your economy. So I think that's kind of dopey. But Schnapp, how do you see it? I don't believe that at all. That yeah. it's because they don't think people would like it. I think that's like part of the weird conspiracy of hater of pre-haters on the movie they're like it's because they they thought if they agree with us it's gonna suck or whatever i think it's exactly what they said superstition they don't want to like increase anybody's ability to believe in that stuff and that's a government thing so that's why it's not just like crimson peak it makes sense but i wouldn't put them in the same category by any means so it's kind of a little little you know a stretch to you know, deny people the fun of the possibility of enjoying Ghostbusters. But may who knows? Maybe in a few years they'll let them see it. I 
just want to know like what trailers or ads they've been seeing because I, I saw Ghostbusters and I don't remember cannibalism being a part of that movie in, in any scene. So I want to know like what makes them believe that Ghostbusters is going to be the movie that has cannibalism in no, it. No, it was Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, was, had oh my bad. I'm sorry. Getting mixed up. Yeah. Uh, um, I was like, yeah. I don't know. It's it's a weird choice. Uh, um, I think you are right, but it's it makes me wonder. Will they have the same choice for Fantastic Beasts? Mm. Like, because you know, talk about superstition and ghosts. Right. Like that, that right. goes d hard right. into that world. Right. I wonder if they did that with Harry Potter. Yeah, I, I don't mean, know. It, that's a good question. Um, I would just say more. I'm curious with like certain horror films that are out there too. It's well, Warcraft played in China. In this that's like weird. I that's more true. Through I guess different yeah. dimensions, that's true. and there's yeah. a sorcerer creature, you know, absorbing people's Maybe because souls. it plays more into the fantasy world, or it's, it's a video game. Like it's, I don't no, know. Every, everyone won't believe I don't that know. this is real, but because Ghostbusters happens in New York. I mean, I don't know if if I I can also understand that if, if I was China and I saw that poster, uh, I would maybe be like, mm. <laughs> uh, I have. Or I'd say add ghosts. Yeah, but I, you know, yeah, put some ghosts in. Throw there. some ghosts yeah. in there. I have a question. What's next? All right. In a recent interview with Entertainment Weekly, Sigourney Weaver spoke a bit about the story director Neil Blomkamp cooked up for the for her Ripley character in the as yet untitled Alien sequel known simply as Aliens 5. Talking about the script and Ripley, Weaver said, It's a great story and it's satisfying to me to give this woman an ending. The script itself has so much in it that's so original but also really satisfies the, I would say, the primal needs of the aliens. It's a tribute to all of the great work that the other directors have done in a way, but goes in a complete completely new direction. I hope we'll do it. Since Fox opted to delay the project, Weaver and Blomkamp's busy schedule meant that they had to move on with other projects while Ridley Scott took on directing duties for Alien Covenant. Here's how Weaver described the situation. Fox asked us to delay so Ridley could shoot his second Prometheus movie. That was too bad because we would have already done it by now. Now that we're waiting for that, I have a couple of avatars to do and Neil has the gone world, so we'll have to see what happens when we get back when those projects are over. A release date for Alien 5 still hasn't been set. Schnepp, what are your thoughts on Sigourney Weaver's comments about her Ripley character and ending? Well, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to see this version of it eventually, but, uh, you know, when the two competing alien projects were announced and Scott then said, look, we're, I'm doing Covenant and it's part of a trilogy and, you know, and, and Scott's also the producer on this other possible aliens future film. These are just, you know, it's an actor or an actress talking about, you know, what they'd like to see happen, which I think any fan of an alien franchise would like to see the continuation, the alternate fork in the road parallel world of Newt and Hicks living and they never went to the weird monk prison planet. And, you know, I mean, originally Sigourney Weaver said that all those years ago. She was like, I'm finishing this. We want to see the ending. And then she, you know, spoilers in Alien 3, she dies, but then she comes back in Alien 4. And now we're really doing the ending. This is so it's sort of. I get it to a certain degree. Like it's no one would have guessed, especially with that, the franchise would have been revived and gone on. And so now she's saying like, this is kind of a cool way to go full circle or continue the franchise after Ridley's done with his, uh, you know, pre prequels. So hopefully we'll see it in the future. But to me, the most exciting news is that Blomkamp is doing the Gone World because it was reported last year that he got the rights to this science fiction film when this film we're talking about was shuttered, this Aliens 5, when it was shuttered last year. So they're obviously moving on. She's doing Avatar, but Gone Gone World sounds great. Um, yeah, you know, it's funny when you, the first thing that kind of stood out to me was the fact that they're tentatively calling it Alien Five, which the report last week was that they're retconning three and four anyway. So it's mm -hmm. really not Alien Five because right. it's going to because it's going to continue after Aliens. So right. they, I don't think they would stick with that anyway. I think just so people don't get confused. Um, but it goes back to what you were saying. I think that there's just it's so tied up in, in people doing other things that it's just not realistic right now that it's going to happen. It doesn't mean it's never going to happen. I also think depending on how this movie goes with Bloom Camp, like what's going to happen with is he going to get back into it? Because remember, look at what happened with Ridley Scott. We were talking about this last week. Mm -hmm. Ridley Scott was a guy that everyone was saying, oh, he's done. And then Bloom Camp's had two. Well, the last Chappie was a miss for yeah. most people, and I didn't love Elysium. Some people really liked it, but it was definitely not as beloved as District 9. Right. So he's still, he's on a low. However, if this movie, what's it's called Gone, uh, Gone, Gone World. World. If he nails this, 
And it's an amazing movie, and it's a great movie. Everyone's like, oh, now I want to see Aliens. Yeah. Now I want to see the new Aliens. So I want to see I what think, he does with this. I think people are going to freak out. like, Because Bloomcup has this very uh, specific design sensibility that he's mm -hmm. carried over in all of his films. And even in some of the concept art that you saw for the proposed Alien 5, it has that kind of biomechanical aspect of Giger's work, but also his design sensibility just kind of comes through. And I was, I, I got a chance to see some stuff that he was working on, didn't know what it was, but now I know that And his design with. sensibility really makes as well with Giger a yes. lot and I think he can also improve on Giger which is why like him being in this world is brilliant but the other thing that that really enthuses me is that there was something about this pitch this proposal that convinced uh, Sigourney Weaver to come back right, like totally. there's something in this that Sigourney Weaver is like I want to do this now we could say that yeah she's come back for Aliens 4 you know like they dumped the, the truck full of money for her mm -hmm. and she came back so maybe her judgment can't be trusted but like to me I don't know like she's been so far gone from Ripley like it's been so many years since she's played Ripley mm -hmm. that there had to be something in the script that she was like yes I'm willing to play Ripley at this age and this many years down the road well, I would assume they probably pitched it to her the same what she was saying is that you get to you we, we're going to retcon three and four, and we're going to tell the story that a lot of people that the fans kind of wanted to see is what happened to everyone, mm -hmm. what happened to Newt, what happened to Hicks. Let's, let's, let's tell that story. And he probably came up with that. But what also excites me about um, Gone World here is because it was the same concern I had with Bloomcamp doing, he was just doing all of his stuff. He wasn't doing mm -hmm. stuff that he just adapted. He's still doing that with this project now that he's that he's going to go off and do. So that will prove that, okay, look, yeah, he's going to make it his own, like yeah. you're saying, but he's still going to be able to take stuff that was already there before. What's not an original idea? Let's see what you do. Let's see if he's able to, if he's going to mix a political tone, I, which I have no problem with. I want it to be balanced like it was in District 9 mm -hmm. and not like this for Elysium. Elysium. Um, so let's see what he does next. And then I think people are going to start calling for this again because I do want to say I I, I want to see it too. I bought in yeah. everything that she was saying. I, I want to see a proper end to this character. I think that it's it's something fans would really respond to, and it could play into the new mythology that Ridley Scott is creating here, whatever that might be. So they might actually be able to play into it a little bit more. Two other things: uh, the Gone World is a time travel thriller, so that's really sounds exciting. like right up his alley. Yep, and this would be great for uh, for Sigourney because she started her career with Alien, and like you know, in ten years or 20 years when you watch all of these films sequentially it's great because we get to see the force awakens and those characters are like jumped in age sort of like mm -hmm. what lucas originally promised us back in the 70s yeah. it's so weird that uh, that came <laughs> that happened so it's kind of cool if they could do it for alien as well all right what's next according to deadline dr strange and 12 years a slave actor chiwetel ejiofor is in talks to join the production of mary magdalene a film which sees rooney mara in the title role alongside joaquin phoenix as a jesus christ ejiofor will play the role of peter jesus's main disciple and one of his 12 apostles the story of jesus's crucifixion in the new testament tells of peter denying jesus three times and later forgiven following the resurrection of christ garth davis is directing the biblical film which is scheduled to begin production this summer for a release eyed for 2017. Jason, what do you think of the casting of Chiwetel Ejiofor in Mary Magdalene? Listen, I think he is a great actor. I think he's such a great actor that I will not attempt to pronounce his name because I'm terrible at it. Um, I think this movie sounds really cool. I think it sounds a really neat idea. I mean, um, usually if you were telling me like, let's do the new story uh, of Jesus, I'd be like, no, 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 stay right. away from that. But this cast Seems to give it enough of an edge that I, and and and, and uh, I, I, how do you say his name? Chiwetel Ejiofor. Chiwetel. 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 I'm terrible at it. See, I already <laughs> said it. Um, he is an amazing actor. Like I'm really excited to see him, in Doctor Strange. I yep. think making him uh, uh, Peter, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is a is a really strong choice. Now, Garth Davis is the one unknown factor because I just looked him up and it says that he's a television director. Do mm -hmm. you guys know him that no. well or any of his? You know, so I'm familiar with that, his work. That's the unknown. It seems like the acting is going to be a yeah. solid foundation, but the directing is going to be like. Hmm, we don't know. Yeah. I, I like everything I'm hearing about this movie because it's a different perspective. We've seen a lot of films obviously telling what happened through Jesus Christ, but we haven't seen the Mary Magdalene story and Rooney Mara mm -hmm. playing it with Edge of Four and Joaquin Phoenix. I see some of the comments saying, ah, Joaquin Phoenix says Jesus passed. This is a dude that transforms. He's into an all, incredible actor. But no, he's perfect he, casting. But he's Jesus. another guy yeah. that transforms. Yeah. And he will, and, and, I, and it's not going to be a main focus on him. So I think by casting Edge of Four as Peter is, is a great choice. And it's very interesting that they're going down this route. And it's also interesting that they got this director who is virtually kind of unknown to us mm -hmm. anyway to get all this high level talent. So he had to do something for right whether it was within the pitch or how he's going to yeah. do this movie. So, yeah, I, I like be, this. It's got to be in the script and, you know, the promises to the actors that they're going to be allowed to, you know, expand and have, 
you know, creative freedom and because they've got real actors. These are all incredible actors and adding Chiwetel to the mix as well as Rooney and Joaquin. Yeah. That makes me want to see this film. That makes me feel like the last temptation of Christ kind of level of mm-hmm. taking yeah. a mythology and a, you know, religious uh, story and adding to it and adding different layers and all the different le- levels and, you know, that can be involved in it. So I'm interested to see it. All right. Well, now it's time for buy or sell. Natasha is going to read some more topics in the world of movie news. Myself, Jason, and Schnapp, they're going to buy or sell it. Natasha, what are we buying or selling? The first official images from Guy Ritchie's King Arthur Legend of the Sword have been unveiled thanks to an article in Entertainment Weekly. The reveal shows Jude Law as the villainous Vortigern, a tyrannical uncle of Charlie Hunnam's titular hero, Arthur. In this version of the story, Arthur is spurred into action when Vortigern murders Arthur's brother and dad, played by Eric Bana, therefore taking the throne. The King Arthur tale originated with screenwriter Joby Harold, whose initial pitch covered a series of King Arthur films that could extend for a very lengthy franchise franchise. Director Richie came in and put his stamp on the screenplay alongside frequent collaborator Lionel Wigram. King Arthur Legend of the Sword opens in theaters on March 24th, 2017. Christian Byer sell the first images from Guy Ritchie's King Arthur Legend of the Sword. I'm going to buy it because I'm, I'm getting a little, speaking of Joaquin Phoenix, I'm getting a little Joaquin Phoenix gladiator um, from Jude Law there. And I think the trailer looks good as Arthur. So, I mean, I don't know what the hell the trailer is going to look like. And I haven't seen a good Arthur movie in a long time, mm-hmm. caliber style. But right. I mean, that's and Guy Ritchie has wanted to do this movie for a very long time, mm-hmm. so it's finally getting it off the ground. I want to see what Guy Ritchie can do in this setting. Uh, I'm interested in it. I don't know if I'm buying or selling the movie yet because I haven't seen a trailer. But from what I've seen so far in these images, I'll buy it. Jason, I'm gonna definitely buy this because I know that Guy Ritchie has wanted to make this movie for so long. I think Charlie Hunnam is a great choice for Arthur, and I like the muted tone of mm-hmm. the pictures, which seems like we may be going for a more realistic tone for King Arthur. Hopefully not as realistic as Clive Owen's uh, terrible movie. Mm. Uh, but but off these images, yeah, I'm totally by because I thought Guy Ritchie uh, killed it with Man from Uncle, so I'm excited to see like what is gonna be his visual style for King Arthur. Right. I love the images. I love I love the texture, the look of everything. I don't want it to be like a Sherlock Holmes. If it's funny, I'm not even going to see it. I don't like, think it will be. I, I just I'm just hoping yeah. mm-hmm. that that you know the tone of it will like. I love Excalibur. I love the mythology mm-hmm. of King Arthur, and that's kind of like to see like a, a, a that's what this looks like a far grittier and more realistic mm-hmm. tr- attempt at it. So that's what I'd like to see. But you buying the images? I buy the images. That's okay. what it's projecting to me. So I hope it follows through. All right. What's next? The first trailer for La La Land has been released online for Whiplash filmmaker Damien Chazelle's highly anticipated follow-up film. The Los Angeles set love story is a full-fledged musical that revolves around the love between a musician played by Ryan Gosling and a struggling actress played by Emma Stone. The film also stars John Legend, Rosemary DeWitt, Finn Wittrock, Callie Hernandez, Sonoya Mizuno, Jessica Roth, Tom Everett Scott, and Josh Pence. La La Land will have its world premiere at the Venice Film Festival on August 31st and opens in limited release on December 9th and wide on December 16th. Schnepp, buy or sell the first trailer for La La Land. Well, I gotta buy it. I actually watched it with Natasha and we were both yeah. like kind of like overtaken by the magical elements of it and it's how, how what a unique and original musical this mm-hmm. feels like. Just from just from the tones of Ryan Gosling whistling at the very beginning to how it carries through and seeing him playing the same thing on the piano, it kind of just has these, uh, these elements that were so new to me to see in a musical that it, it, I honestly, I was like, wow, I cannot wait to see this film. So the trailer, I buy it 100%. I didn't think I would buy it. In fact, I didn't even want to see the trailer. <laughs> and then I watched it, I was like, oh my God, this is really magical. So I, I love it. It was a huge buy for me. I still don't know what the hell the movie is about, and I don't care, because it did. It, because, and I'll tell you why, it's because you, you add the director and what he did with Whiplash mm. and the way that the mu- music was incorporated into the movie, the, the shots of obviously a music video that, they, that they're maybe shooting mm. throughout this mm-hmm. thing. Um, but the chemistry that I've already seen with Gosling and Emma Stone, they, they were in Crazy Stupid Love, they were in that horrible gangster squad, but they were still really good together in that movie. They have great chemistry, so pl- playing into this love story, who the hell knows what else it involves to? I have no idea. I got a little bit like, like a Moulin Rouge feel out of it mm. when I saw this movie, but there, this trailer but there is something about this director that I think, you know, and, and his love for music, obviously, which we saw in Whiplash, that just, it, it, you guys are right. It was, there was something magical about this trailer, so it's a big buy for me. I'm going to give it a buy as well for, for two facts. I think the cinematography in this trailer is beautiful. I think this looks like a very beautiful movie. And you brought up Moulin Rouge, and if they can like just touch on a little bit of that, I think mm-hmm. this will be a huge success. And also, it's a huge buy for me as... 
uh, for a second movie from a, from a f- film director, this is a hell of a gamble, mm, a yeah. musical. And the fact that, that he is stepping up to the plate and like, I'm gonna make this work and here we go, that's a buy for me as well. And I think they're buying, they're, they're selling this off of the fact of all the love that Whiplash got. Mm-hmm. And I think even, even looking at the, the comment section of saying, I'm buying just because of Whiplash. Yeah. Like it, it, Whiplash was a movie that just took the f- like film lovers by storm. I mean, that is one of the best endings in movies oh, like yeah. ever, ever. So and and so you do want to see the guys follow up. It goes back to what we were just saying mm-hmm. before with with Bloomcamp and 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 that is a cr- the pr- the people say that's not, you're not saying it the right way. Yeah. Y- yes, I am. Um, <laughs> Sinead, I, Sinead schooled us. Yeah. You oh, talked to us South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Told us how to say it. So we're right. <laughs> you're right. Uh, I wasn't for a very long time. Right. I was saying, yeah, Bloomcamp. Yeah, Bloomcamp. Bloomcamp. It's not Bloomcamp. You know how you really say it though. Bloom when you say can't you put it down? Whoa. But it's but it's a hell of a thing that he's stepping up to the plate with this kind of a movie for a second. Like he's he's not he's not playing it safe. He's still taking chances. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's next? According to a report from Deadline, the Weinstein Company has high hopes for its Michael Keaton starer, the founder, and is pushing the release date to the Oscar friendly slot of December 16th, where it will then open wide later in January. Michael Keaton stars as Illinois salesman Ray Kroc, who transformed McDonald's into a thriving fast food empire. The actor is in the midst of a major comeback following his Golden Globe winning Oscar nominated performance in Birdman, along with helping the director and cast of Spotlight snag last year's Academy Award for Best picture. This is the second time the studio pushed back the founder, which was initially scheduled to open in theaters August 5th, saving Mr. Banks director John Lee Hancock directs the film based on a screenplay by the wrestlers Robert D. Siegel. And the cast also includes Linda Cardellini, Patrick Wilson, Nick Offerman, Laura Dern, and BJ Novak. Jason Byer sell the founder's new Oscar-friendly release date. I'll buy it. And the reason I'm going to buy it is because um, this actually, the founder, was is one of my most anticipated movies of this year. Ever since that first trailer, I I've just been grabbed in by this entire story. Like I never thought the the origin story of McDonald's could be so interesting. <laughs> uh, that's what this is. It's it the is. Or, it's, the, it's, yeah. it's McDonald's year one. That's, right. that's what this is. Um, the drama. I totally understand why they're pushing it back, and I think that this is the Weinstein Company's attempt to maybe secure Michael Keaton that best actor Oscar. They're gonna make sure that he gets another shot at the goal. And Michael Keaton might get it simply for the fact that like they'll get it to him for his whole career and not specifically this movie, kind of like what they did with Russell Crowe, Denzel Washington, a whole bunch of others. So I think this is a smart move in the Weinstein Company, so this is a total buy. Uh, Personally, this is a sell because I really wanna see this movie, but it's a buy. Uh, actually, uh, it's Jason, a, Jason it's and Natasha, wine, wine that's Weinstein. Uh, Weinstein, uh, guys. Uh, uh, Weinstein. Frankenstein. Just to let you know. Frankenstein. You put this a, is Weinstein. Yeah, think yeah, about it. You have some wine. You put a stein, stein next to it. It's like Weinstein. You're supposed to say Weinstein. Yeah, exactly. You put wine yeah, there. You put just stein. imagine if it was Frankenstein. Just mix them together. That would be a different thing. But this is different. Weinstein. Weinstein. Right. So, with the Weinstein Company. These were wrong together. Doing this movie. We didn't get any music on that one. No, not yet. I'm sure someone will make a video out of it. Yeah. We are the Weinstein yeah, Company. Is it Weinstein? Is it Weinstein? Weinstein? I don't care. Weinstein. All right. Steve? So <laughs> this is this is long overdue. You, you, everyone that is mentioned in this movie, whether you're directing this, the director of the film, which I love saving Mr. Banks, um, to Michael Keaton, the tear that he's been on. When they said they were releasing this in August, everyone's like, why? Mm-hmm. This should be an Oscar movie. Uh-oh, that scares me that they're putting it in August. Then they probably watch it, and they're like, what What are we doing? Yeah. Like, wh- why are we putting this in August? This is, we should be going for the Oscar here, and that's exactly what they're doing and exactly what they should do. And, uh, and talking about the only reason I didn't say... Um, wait, how can this be interesting because it's about the origin of McDonald's is because... I've already seen the origin of Facebook become interesting. Mm, yeah. And because everyone was like, oh, the Facebook movie? And right. then it, it, was, it was because of the team that they had on, because the actors they had in place, it became a, one of the best movies of that year. Just imagine the scene about the secret sauce. I'm just saying. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to see that scene? This Big Mac uh, is yeah. delicious. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, that's, um, that, that is exactly why I think that this is long overdue and it makes a lot of sense. I buy, buy this. I'm with Jason. Uh, when I saw the trailer, I was bowled over. I was mm-hmm. like, yeah. Nick Offerman, fantastic. Fantastic, Michael Keaton, fantastic. Everyone in it is fantastic. And the story, just the process of the story based on real life is really what happened. These guys got, you know, suckered in and they became enemies. And then, you know, it's it just seems like it almost seems like it's too good to be true the way the story, the drama and the, the drama is in, in real life. So yeah, to push it towards Oscar season, I mean, look, I mean, 
just the trailer alone, you're like looking at Michael Keane, like, look, he's this is the role that mm -hmm. feels like similar to Birdman. It's, he's born to play this role, like so it pulls in a lot of elements from his past. I I fully buy this trailer. All or right, the move, for the, this movie. the move. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> Moving on now, it's time for opening this week. Brought to you by our friends over at AMC. What's coming out this week, Natasha? The Infiltrator in 1986, federal agent Robert Mazur, played by Brian Cranston, goes undercover to infiltrate the trafficking network of Colombian drug kingpin Pablo Escobar. Working with fellow agents Kathy Ertz, played by Diane Kruger, and Amir Abreu, played by John Leguizamo, Mazur poses as a slick money laundering businessman named Bob Musella, gaining the confidence of Robert Alcano, played by Benjamin Bratt, Escobar's top lieutenant. Mazur must navigate a vicious criminal underworld where one wrong move could cost him everything and we've got cafe society looking for an exciting career young bobby dorfman leaves new york for the glitz and glamour of 1930s hollywood after landing a job with his uncle bobby falls for vani a charming woman who happens to be his employer's mistress settling for friendship but ultimately heartbroken bobby returns to the bronx and begins working in a nightclub everything falls into place when he finds romance with a beautiful socialite until vani walks back into his life and captures his heart once again all right, I'm gonna start with The Infiltrator, which I saw. Um, when we saw this trailer, I was really on board for this movie because I was hoping for like another Donnie Brasco mm -hmm, type. Sure. It's obviously another true story. What I will tell you about this movie is that I enjoy the performance of Brian Cranston. He's just one of those guys you want to follow in every scene that he's in. He's just one of those actors, and he's really good in it. It was almost pretty good. The chemistry between both Brian Cranston and Diane Kruger has done very well. I just missed the edge that I was hoping the movie would have. There were a couple of times, like in every one of these movies where someone infiltrates uh, or is going undercover, there's always the scene of like, uh-oh, my cover's almost blown. i got to really show that I'm in this. And those type of scenes just didn't work. It almost seemed like, oh, it, it seemed like a movie. Movie. And like even the ending was a little disappointing, but I think it's a good cable watch. I do. I, I think it's a good movie that if you're just you kind of stumble upon it. Oh, I remember when this movie came out, and you watch it, you'll be you'll be um, pleasantly you'll be you'll be okay with it. I think it's just this movie didn't hit the way I wanted it to. The Woody Allen movie, I I want to hear things about too. I mean, you're a Woody Allen fan, yeah? Sure, I am. And what do you think about this one? You know, I'm interested to see this one more than a lot of the other uh, Woody Allen his latest films because this goes back to a time period where he's written so many successful kind of fun films uh, like Bullets Over Broadway. I mean, that that's what this reminds me of. Mm -hmm. So I know it's not going to have that kind of sensibility and that kind of humor, but uh, The Infiltrator, you know, I'm gonna, I, I'm bummed. I was going to go see it in the theater, but no, no it's like, <laughs> you know, I like the trailer, but it reminded me of like, like you said, Donnie Brasco had a yeah. little blow going on in there. But, you know, I, I'm still interested in seeing The Infiltrator. Yeah. And I'm also interested in seeing Cafe Society. Of all the recent Woody Allen films, that's the one that I'm like, all right, I, I definitely want to check that one out. All right, Jason, how about you? Which one stand out? Uh, of the two, I, I'm going. I'm leaning Infiltrator, just okay. for the simple fact of Brian Cranston's performance. Like, I, I hear what you're saying. Like, I haven't seen it, but it sounds. It sounds like they played it safe, which is what some of those movies do. Sometimes they mm -hmm. just like a paint by numbers kind of plot, almost a little bit. Like, no surprises, no turns. But I feel like Brian Cranston's the actor, though that his performances can carry you through movies absolutely. like that. You know, oh, and, absolutely. and that's okay. Um, yeah. Cafe Society, I, man, I can't tell you the last Woody Allen movie I liked. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a, it's been a long time. So that's why I immediately go Infiltrator. I would say the most recent one that I would highly suggest is one I can't even remember what it's called because it's got the weirdest name. <laughs> it's like Wilson? the dude from the other corner around the street in the building who's dead. <laughs> and you're who's like, well, it's Josh Brolin as a screenwriter who has writer's block. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Just look up Josh Brolin and Woody Allen and that's what it's called. What was the Owen Wilson that one that he just did? Where, yeah, that remember. one's garbage. Oh, so, right. I'm just saying, the one that I, if I could recommend the most recent Woody Allen movie that was like, oh my my God, this is crazy. It yeah. wasn't a comedy. It was like a weird thriller. So, Okay. All right. Yeah. Next, moving on, it's time for Mailbag. This is where you guys have submitted questions. It's collidervideo at gmail.com. We've been going through them. We got a couple of them. Natasha, what are they saying? Stuart Fletcher writes, I recently rewatched 2014's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and loved every second of it. Everything from the Oscar-worthy performance by Circus, the stellar cinematography, the mind-blowing action, and the deeply resonating themes were just perfect. I consider that movie a legitimate masterpiece and it should be hailed as an iconic sci-fi film and one of the greatest films on the last decade. But most people just think of it as a good entertaining film instead of a tour de force epic that I think it is. This got me thinking, what's a film you consider an absolute masterpiece but others only praise it as a good or just great film. I love to hear your thoughts. 
thank you, insert hostess here. You're my absolute <laughs> favorite. Don't tell other insert hostess here. That's great. <laughs> all other hostess is filled with hatred and jealousy. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going one that I bring up all the time that we always say is really good, but I think people really, it's underappreciated. Uh, it's an eternal, eternal sunshine from Spotless Mind. Mm. Of Spotless mm. Mind. I think that that movie, I watch it and just appreciate on a filmmaking point of view, like what was done in the, they didn't rely on CGI. They didn't rely, I mean, the emotion you feel, and it's, I still think it's Jim Carrey's best performance that he's ever done. Sure. The chemistry between him and Winslet. I can watch that. I, I cannot, if that movie's on television and it just pops on, I, I have to watch it. It's just, it's, it is a breathtaking movie. I find it flawless. I love the film. I think it is a masterpiece. So that's the one I'm going with. I fully agree with you. I love that film. It's it's great to see if you're getting out of a relationship. It's great to see if you're getting into a relationship. It will crush you either way yeah. and remind you of the beauty and horror it's therapy of therapy and it's yeah. also, yeah. It's a good therapy movie. <clears throat> For myself, a lot of you people might agree or disagree with Blade Runner to me. A lot of people, even just last week I was at a party and somebody was like, oh, I just couldn't get into it. It's boring and slow. It's garbagey. And why do everybody talk about it? Because it's, it's so great, this and that. Some people don't think it's great. What's Some that? people think it's a mediocre film or a boring film. I think it's one of the greatest science fiction films ever made, and it gets better every year I, I live. I've, since I saw it as a little kid, then I saw it again. Stoned out of my mind in Which college. Which they live? Which one? I missed. No, no, Blade saying. Runner. Oh, Blade Runner. Right, yeah, right. I mean, it's 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 not an action film. It's a science fiction film that's all about life right. and death. So, I mean, for myself, I think it's an incredible film. Jason, you know, I'm gonna go with the original Mash film. Oh wow! Because I don't think it gets enough respect because I think the TV show has buried it. Yes. But it is just as important and just as good as that TV show. It is this weird Robert Altman like sort of real life yet they're definitely not in the real world war movie that really hits and, and amazing performances by Donald Sutherland and, and mm. Elliot Gould. Um, it, if, if you've never seen the original MASH film, I would say definitely check it out because it, it is an, such an underappreciated uh, war comedy. Yeah. Fully agree with you. Natasha, do you have any that uh, you have seen that you say, you know, a lot of people say, that's yeah, good or it's just okay and you think is great? The Minions movie. The Minions movie? Nice. <laughs> that's, a, that's a masterpiece. Uh, it's available right now on Netflix. If you haven't seen those little yellow guys running around, you can watch it. How about that, buddy? All right. Uh, uh, talking, how do you think I feel about the Minions uh, band? Weinstein. All right, let's get to Weinstein. the next one. Weinstein. Sorry. Mega bafu. Okay, no, no. William Saturno writes, Hey, Collider Crew, been listening every day for the last few months, and your shows have become a part of my daily routine. Some of the early reviews for the new Ghostbusters movie have said that they were surprised by how funny Chris Hemsworth was despite being mostly known as an action star. My question is, can you think of any great performances by an actor or actress that is in a different genre of film from what they're typically known for? I personally would have to go with Zachary Galifianakis in Birdman or Robert De Niro in Meet the Parents. Thanks and keep up the good work. I'm going with the late great Robin Williams in one hour photo mm, nice. uh, you did not expect that coming the fact that he's one of, he was one of the most beloved actors of all time you felt like you knew him I and mean, that's why everybody was so kind of torn up when when he passed away mm -hmm. um, but that role is so creepy and he got to a really dark place that you just did not see you knew he was capable of it because of his background you know obviously from Juilliard and stuff too but the but when you see it, it's just such a haunting performance. So I, that's the one that, that got me. How about you? Um, the one that, that came to my mind, and you, you name-checked him earlier, was actually Jim Carrey, but Jim Carrey for The Truman Show. Mm -hmm. Like, that was, like I think, one of his first serious dramatic sure, roles. Sure. And I remember him like just having an innocence. Like, he was able to like just turn off, because before then, it would be in the Ace Ventura, Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, rubber face. All these, yeah, crazy, like, zingy Jim Carrey. And for that, he just turned it off, and I thought, like, he got the closest he ever could to, like, just innocent child that I'd ever seen somebody do. And I think it really makes that movie work, and I was really surprised at the time that I that Jim Carrey could pull that off. Sure. Yeah. You know, for myself, it's an underrated Scorsese film called King of Comedy. And yeah. it's not just Robert De Niro, but it's also Jerry Lewis performing not as a mm -hmm. comedian, but as a, a real a real person. So right. if you haven't seen King of Comedy, that has two incredible roles oh, yeah. by both of those guys. Yeah. Okay, that's everything for Mailbag. Now, before we get to live Twitter questions, where you guys should be submitting questions at Collider Video and making sure Natasha is locked into those, we're going to check in with the Wendy Cam to see what they have been saying about our buy or sell topics and our main topics. Wendy, what are they saying? 
when they're talking about the Ghostbusters being banned in China, and even though the ban in China is uh, due to censorship, a lot are saying that the movie is being banned because it's a bad movie. <laughs> or A says that ban in China, along with the mixed reception from reviewers, is really going to hurt the box office for this movie. And also regarding the portrayal of superstition and afterlife in China, uh, Christopher Marino says that's why there's no haunted mansion in D Disney uh, China because they created a whole different ride for it. And then in our buy or sell section for the La La Land trailer, so everybody in the chat room pretty much loves this trailer. Some are calling it the best trailer of the year. Um, although a lot are selling it because they found out uh, that it's a musical. Lana says, definitely buy. I am glad someone's creating an original musical rather than remaking an old one or adapting from a Broadway musical. Yep. All right. Nice. Uh, it's, it's interesting. I'm very curious what the next trailer is going to show in that film. Yeah, why so much hate on musicals? Yeah. What's wrong with you All guys? you haters. <laughs> uh, haters. <laughs> now it's time for live Twitter questions. You guys have been submitting some. Tasha has been going through them. What do we got? Okay, No Pants Daniel asks, <laughs> has, <laughs> has there ever been an actor you've done a complete 180 on? Couldn't stand, but now love. It'd definitely be the Goss, a.k.a. Ryan Gosling for me. Uh, Shia LaBoots. Uh, mm. Shia LaBeouf mm. for sure he was someone that when he started his career I was like oh this kid's gonna be pretty good and then he went into all these not only with his the stuff he was doing in his personal life but where he was going straight into the big blockbusters of the Transformers movies and no 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 every five seconds and then just all even I know a lot of people like <clears throat> Eagle Eye I didn't love it and then what he did in, in Indiana Jones I was like okay I'm, I'm just done with this dude and then I saw Fury um, and what he's done, he, the, and even in Nymphomaniac one and two, he the the guy is an incredible, incredible actor. He really is, and he's someone that I have now r appreciated what what he's done. And I'll tell you another one is 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 Sam Worthington. Hmm. Now, oh, interesting. I thought you were going to say Jai Courtney. Not yet, oh, no, not yet. But I, I, know, but, I know, but I, I could, but I could. I know. After the reason I bring up Sam Worthington is because when Sam Worthington is in the leading role, it doesn't really work. They yeah. try to push him at you and say, this is your new movie star. Right. Take it. What do you think? And you go, no, thanks. But then you see him in movies like Cake or Everest, and he is great. And not good. Great. He's a really good actor. Or so even that weird uh, Schwarzenegger one. Remember, he was like the side guy with the shaved head and the weird. Which one was that? I can't even remember. It was called like Rampage. I, or It was yeah. a really strange kind of weird film. Oh, wow. Schwarzenegger Maggie? gets betrayed. No, oh. it's a mercenary like these guys are doing. This oh, thing. right, you know right, right, about? right. The one with Joe Maggianello yes. also. Oh, Sam, uh, uh, Sam Sabotage. 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 Sam Sabotage. Yeah, yeah. Sabotage. Sabotage. Plays a, he doesn't even yes. look like Yes, and he was really, you're right. Yeah. He was really good in that. So those are the guys that I've kind of come around on. Um, I think they make, oh, and Taylor Kitsch is another one who's kind of come around doing this, the other side cat. Really good in Lone Survivor. Totally. Really good in True Detective. He was yeah. great in John Carter, though. He just got a bad rap, I yeah. thought. What do you um, think? Uh, Matthew McConaughey for me. Yeah. You know, when he first started, yeah. he was like, the, I'm the crazy shirtless dude banging the drum. I'm always stoned and I'm banging the drums. I'm getting, yeah. you know, cops are coming at me and hey, I'm in these dumb movies. And uh, then he started, he just started, I can't remember the very first film where I was like, wow, he's great. In, but I remember Mud, and Interstellar. It was probably a, c a couple of films right before that, that I was like, wow, this guy can really act. So mine is uh, Colin Farrell. Because oh, Colin yes. Farrell, when he first popped on the scene, Minority Report, there's a couple other movies. I thought he was great. And then he started doing like, these really t like SWAT and just like he, sure. he kept started taking the paycheck and he just went down in this hole and I was like what are you doing Colin Farrell and then right. I kind of feel like in Bruges in Bruges he, he came I was back hoping you'd then, say that one, yeah man. and then um, a couple of the weird movies like that but then he was great in uh, Saving Mr. Banks Should've been nominated for that yeah, yeah 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 and, and then and it, it looks like he's gonna be good in Fantastic Beasts but so like he kind of started really great went down in the hole and now he's figured it out again because he was great totally. in True Detective season two as well with Taylor Kitsch yeah all right what's next. Sebastian Fila asks, name a movie that you liked the first time, but you couldn't stand for a rewatch or didn't like it the second time. Oh, man, I got to think about that. Name a movie that you didn't like the first you time. You liked it the first time. You liked it the first time. time. You didn't like, didn't it, like it the second, second time. time. I know that just recently happened to me. Yeah, I know. I'd have to think about it. Uh, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but this, right. this is the, the most recent one I can think of. It was Ant-Man. Okay. Oh, I wow. liked it the first time I saw it. I had, a, I had a fun time. I laughed a lot. I was like, this is great. The second time I saw it, I was like, Oh, this is Iron Man one except he shrinks. Like it, and it didn't snap to me until right. the second time. I was like, this is the same plot beats as Iron Man one, and that that it kind of threw me out of the movie. Hmm. Uh, I can't, I can't I'm pass on. That yeah, I'm gonna pass on it. too. I can't think. Of it. Right. <laughs> Thanks okay. for trying to stymie us. <laughs> All the hate for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Ant Man. No. Wait. <laughs> Okay, Grant asks, thoughts on Suicide Squad tracking for 100 to 125 million opening weekend? That's awesome. Yeah. I think I, I love that. That's it's exciting. Good. And you know why I believe it is because my dad calls me and, he, and he's like, 
like, how about the Suicide Squad Your thing? Dad. Oh, My yeah. dad, he's like, it looked good. He's like, I don't know what the hell it's about. That means like, maybe that could be 150 <laughs> he has, million. He looks good. He's yeah, like, I want to see that. Guy. Yeah, and he's like, he has no idea. He's not following the DC universe right. or anything. Too. Mm-hmm. He just he saw the trailer and he wants to see it. And he's like, right. it looks cool. It looks like a cool movie. So I, yeah. yeah, I can see I think it really it's because doing well. like a lot of the advertising could you could literally put this as it could just be an action movie. It could right. just be an action movie that oh, it's a team of people and they just look silly, yeah. whatever, and they're gonna shoot things. I'm in. Like I, I think it, because of that, it, it's gonna have like a lot of appeal outside of like the nerd network. Right. Weird jail clowns. Attack. Yeah. We're gonna see that movie. Yeah. I don't yeah. care what it's called. <laughs> Saw the trailer. Yeah, no, it's exciting to hear that it's tracking towards 125. I hope it makes a lot more, and I also hope it's an incredible film. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hopefully we'll see it at San Diego Comic Con. All right. Woo. What's next? Okay. Abigail says, Hi, besides Joker, Harley, and Batman, what Suicide Squad character would you like a spin-off movie of? Uh, let me see the movie first. Um, I mean, 100 percent Deadshot. Yeah, Will Smith's character. I'm probably mean, gonna get it, right? I, th- there's no doubt in my mind he's gonna get it because like that character is so perfectly built for for Will Smith, and Will Smith can just do his Will Smith thing, which right. he's solid at in the character of Deadshot. And also, Deadshot is a character started out as a Batman villain. Correct. He has like 50 years of history. He has 50 years of stories that you could pull from, mm-hmm. and there have been Deadshot solo series. So like yep. to me, Deadshot 100. percent And he's tied in with Batman in the film. Yeah, Batman put him there. Yeah. So I mean, that makes total sense. Who else? Uh, probably not Katana because she fits in with the Outsiders. If they're going to rock a side it's thing true, with the Outsiders, true. that could work. But you could maybe do a Rick Flag movie, maybe, but I don't, I don't see. I yeah, don't that's see why that. I want to see what happens yeah. in the movie. Yeah, Killer Croc gets his own yeah. standalone. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. but it depends. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's do two more. Okay, Ben Smith asks, "Who would you like to play J. Jonah Jameson in the MCU Spider-Man movies?" Didn't everybody? Didn't we already talked about Ice Cube should be J. Jonah Jameson. Ice Cube. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know why he hasn't been I cast mean, yet. I, I think he's gone in for meetings, actually. From what he should. Remember, he, didn't wow. you say? Cause you said it was like a day after. Yeah, we, we, we talked, talked about, about it, it, and then all of a sudden somebody put him in for a meeting. But that was our pick. So it's interesting. You know. It's an interesting. Choice. I mean, I, I, Ice Cube would be awesome. I'll throw out like uh, Hugh Laurie just because he's funny on Veep, I and I think love he would be that choice. Hugh Laurie would be an interesting choice. I'm gonna steal Jason's. I think Hugh Laurie is a great choice. I'm keeping with Ice Cube. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> all right, last one. Okay, Michael Latham asks, "What do you think is the lesser of two evils, an unneeded sequel or an?" Unwanted reboot. Uh, unneeded. It it's depends on how it's executed. An unneeded sequel or an unnecessary reboot. Uh, yeah, I th- I think the lesser of two evils is a sequel because for me it, it's that you can get because there might be elements of the sequel that tie into what you love about the mythology of the original movies. So for for example, for me, if the Ghostbusters would have continued on to the mythology of what I liked about the first two, then I might have found myself kind of connecting all the tissues a little bit differently. As where the reboot, if it's not if it's not executed in a way that it's superior or as good as the first one, you're always like, wow, why did they why did they even right. bother remaking the damn thing because it's like it's Mm -hmm. i don't see the reasoning behind it so i would say a lesser two evils for me is the sequel yeah i'm sticking with like i would not i would i would rather not see a reboot like i don't want to see an american version of the raid why because i already saw the raid and it was done perfectly i don't need to see a remake of uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo Mm -hmm. why because i already saw the perfect version of it so those kind of reboots for america are unnecessary we live in a global world just get used to reading subtitles you know yeah, I, I agree. The the less the the unwanted sequel is is the lesser of two evils. Yeah. Similarly, and you brought up Ghostbusters, there they would have fixed a lot of problems I had, or I would have let a lot of stuff in Ghostbusters slide if we had like done that last scene and it, it's in the same universe as the original two yeah. movies. Yeah. I would have been like, I'm cool. Good. I can my nostalgia glasses can can wipe a lot of this away. Yeah. You know. Speaking of Ghostbusters, myself, Schnapp, and Wendy will be doing a Ghostbusters spoiler heavy review that will be up on the channel here tomorrow. So make sure you check that out. And also going up tomorrow, it is the movie trivia showdown. Matt Nost, co host of Top 10 here on Collider, is going up against Machinima ETC's Elliot Dewberry. These guys are going to go out. It's going to happen tomorrow. So make sure you check that out. Who do you think is going to win? Put it in the comment section. And then another announcement that I don't know if you guys know making his return to the Schmodown ring is this gentleman over here. It's Big John Schnepp. He is going to be going up against a man making his debut, Kale Anonymous, making his Schmodown debut. Are you excited about it? Yeah, the wrath of Kale, it's not going to happen. I'm excited to take that guy down. I'm excited to get back in the ring. If I win, <clears throat> I'm coming for someone very special, and you know who it is. 
All right. Well, do also, it, August it. 5th, <laughs> August 5th, I'm getting back in there, and I'm going up against this guy over here, Jason Inman. Going to be a big battle there. So cool matches coming up for you guys on the Schmodown. Thank you guys for joining us today. i like to thank the panel. First, Big John Schnepp. Where can they find you? You guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter, just at John Schnepp. Uh, you can find me everywhere at San Diego Comic-Con, walking around, sweating it out on the floor. <laughs> got a ton of panels. Look it up, son. It's on the schedule. Get into it. We got Film HQ. We got Collider Heroes. We got Collider Movie Talk. A whole bunch of fun stuff. I'm doing a heavy metal tribute to the movie on Friday night. I'm doing a big announcement of what happened on Saturday at 10 a.m. So check it out. There's also a super secret thing that's going to explode around, so you'll be seeing and that a lot of uh, cool metal news coming up i'll see you later next week san diego comic con <laughs> jason inman where can they find you uh you can find me on instagram twitter and youtube at jawin j-a-w-i-i-n uh podcast geek history lesson and of course uh i'll be walking around san diego comic con all over the place with dc all access um so my biggest request is uh if you see me Say hi, because I see so many tweets where people are like, "I saw you, but I didn't say yeah. hi." Just say hi. Are you going to be at the meeting? Be bashful. Uh, and I and I and I, if I can't, I will be at the meeting. It's my plans to be there. Yeah, we'll see if DC there. lets me be there. Well, someone else who will be at the meet and greet. It's <laughs> Natasha Martinez. Yay. Where can they find you besides at the meet and greet? Yeah, you guys can find me at the meet and greet, and you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at Natasha Lexis underscore. Wendy Lee, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. Well, for me, Christian Harloff, both Twitter and Instagram. You can find me here today on Collider Jedi Council. Make sure you check that show out because we talk Star Wars and we got a lot of previewing to do for Celebration as it starts tomorrow. Reminding you once again that Movie Talk might be around 10, 15 minutes late depending on when the Rogue One trailer drops. So just be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys for joining us. Let people know about Movie Talk. Share it. Talk about it. Comment here today. If you're watching it on the replay, comment. What stories did you like? Like that. Like that. You see that like right there? Keep hitting it. Make sure you come back tomorrow. Do it all over again because we're here five days a week for you talking movie news. We'll see you tomorrow. Comic-Con. Hey, guys. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.